everyone, and welcome to Iwood Uncut, an event designer's podcast. I'm your host, Lucy Molina, and make sure that you're following us, liking, and subscribing so you can stay updated with all of our different content that we have just for you. So this is our first episode, and you might be asking yourself, who is Iwood? <laughs> what do we stand for? What do we do? Um, Iwood stands for the Institute of Wedding and Event Design. It's a school that focuses on hands-on education for aspiring designers or seasoned professionals. We wanted to create a podcast that is different and really caters to you, the designer. I am so tired of hearing only wedding planning podcast, interior design podcast, but none for us. Where do designers go to? And I wanted to be sure to bring you the real deal in what it takes to be a designer the Insider Secrets. This podcast is going to feature so many different topics. It's going to have special guests as well. And it's going to cover a lot of the different issues or even factors that we go through as designers. With over 11 years of experience in the industry, I've always felt that I want to turn to a podcast that really talks about what's going on in our industry down from trends, you know, down to what it really is that's going on in terms of life and work balance, which as a designer, we wear so many different hats that we get overwhelmed. Like, where do we go? So this is what this podcast is all about. It's going to cover so much different content, and I'm so excited for this. And not to mention that this has been a long road for us at IWED uh, to create this podcast because we wanted it to be very special and unique to those that love design as much as we do because that's what it's all about. It's learning, growing, and also just feeling inspired to just keep creating. And that's what this podcast really stands for. Now, not to mention that today's podcast episode is called Unleashing the Hustle, which in itself, creating this podcast has been a hustle. It's been one of my biggest hustles because there's so many things that have had to be overcome and there's so much prepping and planning that has had to be done. So through my whole entire time here, I've thought about how can, you know, we not only just educate our students or even listeners, it's like, how can we, you know, completely inspire and keep you all motivated, especially when it comes to dealing with situations? Like, for example, let's say that you are in this space where you feel like you finally want to make this a career in design or maybe you're someone that already has been in the industry for so long, but you feel stagnant. You feel like, where do I keep going? Like, I feel like I'm not growing or learning. And that's what this hustle is all about. It's the fact that you're passionate, you're committed. And it starts with that, being committed to the dream, to what you really want to pursue and do. If you are someone who wants to be, let's say, a specialty designer or a full service designer, and I guess I should backtrack and really explain what those two things even mean, right? So for example, if you're a full service designer, it means that you offer anything from tabletop floral design to backdrop design, dance floor design, or specialty that you only focus on doing one thing. And there's nothing wrong with either or the other. It's just really important to kind of define, like, what is it that I'm going to focus on? Because... If I was to think back of when I first started, if I would have said, in my experience, I want to do it all, I would have been lying. I was at first like, what am I doing? Like, I love creating and designing, but like, what am I really, really good at? And I always felt like I wanted to design weddings because they're so magical, right? Like, it's who doesn't grow up watching, you know? Cinderella. Maybe you didn't. Maybe you liked other type of shows. But for me, seeing happy endings and seeing how beautiful that moment was and seeing it all come to life, it was magical. And I felt like I wanted to have that feeling and I wanted to evoke that emotion um, with clients or even, you know, potential people in the future. And I always ask myself, can I make a career to design? And that's when I realized that I would have to be a hustler because you're going into a creative field. It's not like a traditional job where you go to law school, you become a lawyer, you take the bar exam. There isn't a traditional route. It's more of you're a creative, meaning you 
create things, you imagine them in your mind and then you make them come to life. It's something that is not taught so much in just a textbook. It's taught through really like loving what you do. So in that moment, I'm like, okay, I love design. I want to create, how can I make this an actual career? And that's when I realized there's so many different avenues, but education does help a lot for sure. But it really took me like sticking committed to the fact that I wanted to make event design my career. I wanted to be a designer. There was no other title. And through that path, it was not just, you know, oh my God, I'm going to be a great designer because I'm good. No, like there's a lot of doubt. And the first thing is that commitment aspect that you're doing. So you're committed to this, right? You want to go for it. How can I actually make it happen? And it starts by making moments count. When you're in that process of making moments count, it's like, I'm designing. How am I going to showcase my work? And that's where I'm going to take you back a little bit on my journey with that. So I knew I wanted to design and I had gotten some educational, uh, you know, sectors that I felt were helpful in developing that. But I always wanted to stay true to signature style, like what my signature style was. I didn't want to copy other designers. And that's when I realized that you have to work out what you love doing. So you know, whether it's doing that for free for family members, which I did do that at first, which was fun because at first I'm like, oh my God, they believe in me. But then I'm like, wait, I'm not making any money. Like, how am I going to, how am I paying for things? Like, how am I going to make a livelihood out of this? And it got to a point where I, even my family said to me, like, do you really want to go for this career? Like, you know, you're going to have to hustle for it. It's not going to come easy. You're going to, like, do you want to be a starving artist? And that was like such a thing that was very common to hear because anyone who goes into an artistic career, it's like you're going to be a struggling artist or a starving artist. And I'm here to tell you that's not the case. That if you're committed to what you love doing and you're going for a hustle, that is the key component is when you love something, and especially when you're hustling for it, it's that passion, it's that drive. It's you every day waking up and staying focused on your end goal. And it doesn't mean that, oh my God, I want to be a designer or an artist. I have to quit my nine to five. I'm going to be very honest. I worked a nine to five and then outside of my nine to five, it came down to my dream and my hustle. It came down to working for the things that I love doing, which was design. I like book clients. I do styled, um, you know, styled shoots for different designers. I'd find ways to just kind of stay in tune with that. And I'm here to tell you that it's okay if you're, you know, on your way to creating your, you know, dream career, it's fine that you have a nine to five. That's absolutely okay because it's normal. But what's important with all that is that you stay focused and remember that you have the same 24 hours as Beyonce does, or as even my personal favorite, Oprah. <laughs> you have the same 24 hours, but it's what you do with that time frame. It's making sure to also, in the hustle, have divided time that's allocated correctly, making every moment count. That's what you'll hear from any hustler out there is that you make every moment count. Whether that is a nine to five, it doesn't mean that as soon as you get out of five o'clock, you go home and watch Netflix. No, you don't have time for that. You have a commitment to your dream that you're going for. So that means that you get home and you start actually, you know, posting on social media, promoting on your business account, because luckily now you can use the power of social media versus what it used to be, just traditional marketing. You can use social media to your advantage and running no promotions and that's what you're doing. It's you're building your business, even if you have your nine to five. Then from that, when you're moving on, is you want to think about the fact that there's so much money to be made in this industry. And this is just like a side little factor to think about. This is a $90 billion making industry. That's a whole lot of money. It wouldn't be amazing if you cashed out on that. But anyways, that's besides the point. It's the fact that you, there's, that means that there's money for you to be uh, making in this industry. So it starts with making every opportunity count. So that means networking. So you're new to the industry. You're seasoned and great. 
How are you getting yourself out there? How are you working with new talent? Um, going to networking events is your key to success when it comes to making connections and learning about things you have no idea about. Like, for example, you can go on a great website like eventbrite.com and look up upcoming events in your area and have, you know, your nice little stack of business cards. And also a good tip for you to know is your business card, you could just have one business card with your QR code to your Instagram or website handle. And literally when you go to events now, they'll just ask for your QR code. They'll take a picture of it. And what's great is they'll take it directly to their, your, your Instagram or your business webpage. And just like that, you're starting to mingle. And even if you have to go alone to these things, that is okay. And that's again, you maximizing opportunities. Like don't let any opportunity just like leave, like remember to own it. And even if you're very nervous and you're introverted, it is okay. I want you to channel your inner, whoever it is you need to channel. Like Beyonce has an inner Sasha Fierce, which is crazy to think because that's Beyonce and we're like, oh my God, but she has Sasha Fierce. So find your Sasha Fierce version to help you get yourself out there and go to these events and network. Because a key thing that I'm going to tell you is whether you are a specialty or full service designer, for example, as I mentioned earlier, is the fact that you're always learning. And that's a big thing that um, a hustler mindset requires is being a sponge and remember that you don't know it all, that you're constantly going to grow and evolve. And that comes with even networking. Like, for example, I don't do floral design. It is not my forte. I leave that to my amazing friends in the industry that really focus on that. But what I did learn from my industry florist designers is they tell me about pricing. They tell me about what the names of the flowers are or what's in season, which is so important for you to know when you are working in this industry. It's like you're passionate about something, but what's going to make it so you're that go-to designer is the fact that you're so knowledgeable, that you know so much about every little thing, and it makes you so much well-rounded. As a designer, that is the key component, is the fact that you'll even attract more clients because you'll be able to, in that first consultation with your client, not just say, yeah, you know, those are beautiful flowers. You'll be like, those are beautiful peonies, and actually those are in season. And I actually have a designer in mind that actually is the you know, specialist for those type of flowers and arrangements and can give me a great price. You sound so much more different. And when you exude confidence, you'll exude that through everything you do in your design world and in your business. And that is the key component when it comes to having that very focused mindset. Another thing that is very important when you are in this process of, you know, having a hustler mindset is you need to understand and accept that there are going to be setbacks. Failures are part of the process. And the beautiful thing about it is when you're someone who is having that very hustler mindset is you see failures as opportunities to grow and learn instead of just moments of sitting there and, oh my God, freaking out and saying, I can't do this anymore. Life is out to get me. Because I want you to remember, life is never going to stop testing you. Like a great example is I've been so like nervous and excited for this podcast. Nervous because I want this to be the best for you guys. I want you guys to like really, you know, connect with everything. But also I was nervous because I'm sick and I, had, I got a cold and I was like, I had this whole plan and I'm a planner and nothing comes out as you plan <laughs> in life. But what I realized is like, that's, that's a test. That's a part of the process and you grow from it. But instead of just sitting there and moping about it, it's like, I, I had a laugh about it. I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna sound a little muffled. <laughs> um, and at the end of the day, I'm just, I wanted it to be real and organic and I'm so excited that we're doing this because, again, I've heard so many podcasts and I feel like I can never relate to any of them. They never understand or talk about like the design process, dealing with clients, like understanding pricing, working with vendors, how like you will get so much 
anxiety, but for you love the anxiety and pressure of design because you like thrive in it. It's like a crazy relationship. <laughs> and um, <laughs> that's what I'm here to like really talk about the fact that you have to be resilient in everything you do when it comes to design, especially when you are going for, you know, that dream career or if you're going for it, you know, building your business. It's it's a foundation you have to stay very focused and understand that no matter what life throws at you, you keep it going, you keep it moving and you're going to be okay. And take every thing that happens as an opportunity to grow and learn because that's what you see all these designers you might admire. Like for example, you might see David Tutera, Mindy Weiss, uh, or even Preston Bailey. They've all had different, you know, obstacles to make it to where they are. And I'm actually going to share like one of my little favorite stories about like who was one of my mentors, which was David Tutera. Before he even became this amazing designer that we all see now, he actually started working at a floral shop and he would actually like, like was working in like the cleaning aspect of like brooming in the floral shop, like really grinding it, like hustling it and learning and seeing everything how the you know the operational system of a floral shop worked until he was able to buy it out and i think that's an amazing a testament to hard work dedication and being resilient that you start from the bottom to really make it to the top and that's what i want to remember that no matter where you're starting at now you have the opportunity to grow and learn and you just have to stay focused committed passionate and above all like be a sponge and also don't get stuck like remember to keep it going and to stay focused and you'll see how everything that is thrown at you you're going to overcome um, now when it comes to all of that being said you also have to know how to maximize the opportunities which is a key factor in design or when you're even building your you know business uh, maximizing everything that comes your way for example you have to think about if I'm going to be working with different clients, great. How can I make it so I have a lasting relationship with these clients? And I always tell a lot of the different students and stuff that I work with that when you work with someone, it's not just their wedding day you're working to design. You're hoping to be the family designer, which is something that you'll see a lot of successful people do. Like Mindy Weiss is a great actual example of that. Mindy Weiss started as Kris Jenner's uh, event planner. Now she does all of the Kardashian events. She is the family planner. There's no one else. It's Mindy Weiss for the Kardashians and Jenners. Then it became to that they were like, hey, we love this event. Then all the Hollywood A-listers started booking her. And that's to show you, again, it's maximizing those opportunities and making sure to not just build one lasting relationship with a client for their special day, but to make it a lifetime of events you're gonna be sharing and designing and building for them. So the next time you're designing, I want you to remember that no idea ever comes to life without some determination and hustle. Thank you so much for watching today's podcast episode, Unleash the Hustle. This was our first podcast episode ever. I hope you all enjoyed it. Make sure to like, subscribe, and follow on any of the platforms you might be listening on or if you're watching us. And make sure to stay tuned for our next podcast episode, The Power and Passion. Can't wait to see you all then.